So coming to the first question, which of the following is not characteristic of congenital syphilis? Gown complex, interstitial keratitis, mulberry molars, notched incisors. Just now we have seen the clinical picture of Hutchinson's triad. So we can rule out the options accordingly. Gone complex is something which is a calcified focus of infection seen in lungs in case of patients suffering from tuberculosis. Whereas the rest of the three, interstitial keratitis, mulberry molars, notched incisors, and eighth nerve deafness are components of Hutchinson's triad or in case of congenital syphilis, right? So coming to the next question, syphilis becomes seropositive in chancre that is primary syphilis, mucopatches secondary syphilis, gamma tertiary syphilis, congenital syphilis. So for all these options while I, I was discussing the theory I mentioned that patient remains seronegative in primary but he becomes seropositive in secondary syphilis. So the answer is obvious here it's mucopatches secondary syphilis. Coming to the next question oral ulcers that are painless are associated with option A secondary herpes, option B primary syphilis, option C tuberculosis and option D primary herpes. So the characteristic oral manifestation of primary syphilis is presence of chancre which is nothing but a painless ulcer. So the answer is obvious here. Coming to the next question, the oral lesions of syphilis that is highly infective is. So the form of syphilis which is considered to be metastatic or uh, which is highly infective is secondary stage or secondary syphilis and we also have a condition called as loose maligna which is seen in secondary syphilis where there is an explosive widespread form of syphilis especially in immunocompromised patients that's loose maligna right now the question is oral lesions of syphilis that are highly infective are gamma Coplic spot, mucus patches, and tapes dorsalis. Of all these options, mucus patch comes under secondary syphilis, so this is the appropriate option. Tapes dorsalis is nothing but slow, gradual degeneration of nerves as well as fibers present in spinal cord, usually seen in untreated cases of syphilis. Right? Whereas coplic spots are something which are seen two to three days prior to the manifestation of measles. So these are intraoral white lesions which are seen along the molars and premolars on the buccal mucosa, right? Gamma we have discussed already. Now coming to the next question, Hutchinson's triad includes. So we have various combinations here. So based on that, we can choose the appropriate answer. So triad, it includes eighth nerve deafness, interstitial keratitis, and also screwdriver shaped incisors and mulberry molars, hypoplasia of the teeth. Right? Now moving on to the next question. Gamma occurs in primary stage, secondary, tertiary, and primary tuberculosis, asked in Karnataka 2000. So it's a direct question. So gamma, soft, non-cancerous growth, it's nothing but a granuloma, a granulation tissue combination, which is usually seen in case of tertiary syphilis. And the common oral sites where we can come across gamma is either palate or even tongue. Splitted papule at the corner of mouth. Recurrent herpes labialis, recurrent herpetic stomatitis, increased vertical dimension, secondary syphilis, asked in PGA 2003. So these splitted cap uh, papules are characteristic features of secondary stage of syphilis. This, uh, these are some of the oral lesions apart from snail track ulcers and mucus patches seen in case of secondary syphilis. Coming to the next question. The first consideration in the differential diagnosis of painless palatal perforation would be syphilis, histoplasmosis, scrofuloderma, acnomycosis. So in syphilis, in tertiary stage, we have this characteristic oral manifestation gamma, which can lead to palatal perforation and it's painless. And secondary syphilis occurs after, it's a direct question, 6, 9, 13 and 1 week respectively. So usually secondary syphilis is seen after 6 weeks after infection enters into the human body. Coming to the next question. The explosive widespread form of secondary syphilis in immunocompromised individual is known as. So it's again a direct question. It's Lewis maligna, which is an explosive widespread form of syphilis seen in case of immunocompromised patients. Oral lesions of secondary syphilis includes all except. So 
snail track ulcers, mucus patches, chancre of tongue and Hutchinson's wart. So the question is oral lesions of secondary syphilis. They are asking the manifestations of secondary syphilis. So obviously it is chancre which is characteristically seen in primary syphilis, right? True about syphilis is oral lesions are seen at any stage. Clinical manifestations occur after a few months of exposure. VDRL test is positive in early days of primary syphilis. Penicillins are ineffective. So the true statement about syphilis is oral lesions seen at any stage, primary, secondary or tertiary. The rest of the statements are false. We use penicillins for treating syphilis. VDRL is negative in early stages and clinical manifestations occur immediately after exposure, right? So these are some of the important points pertaining to syphilis and we have seen several multiple choice questions pertaining to this topic asked in various entrance exams, right? Thank you.